Hey YouTube, Bob here. I want to welcome you to the next installment of my first party Nintendo Player's Guides playlist. Uh, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Game Boy Player's Guides. This is going to be the first of two videos uh, for the Game Boy Player's Guides. Remember in the first one uh, we take a general look at all of the player's guides for that particular console and um, I take an in-depth look at one of them. And then uh, you can take a peek in the video description for this video and you'll find a link to a form that you can fill out to vote on which guide or guides, you can select more than one, that you would like to see featured in part two. So without further ado, let's get on with the Game Boy Player's Guides. And uh, this is actually a console uh, for which I don't have all of the guides. For just about all of the other, uh, well no, I can't even say that because this is the first, um, this is the first console where uh, Pokemon games started to be included. And uh, as you may or may not know, uh, when Pokemon got popular in the mid to late 90s, I was in high school, so I just kind of missed that Pokemon craze. I never got into it, and as a collector, I never wanted to go back to it and get into it because, well, you know, <laughs> money. So uh, Pokemon is something that I have stayed away from just because it's not really anything I have nostalgia for. So as a result, I don't have any of the Pokemon player's guides. So uh, my um, player's guides collection going forward now uh, will not have any Pokemon games, unfortunately. So there were no doubt uh, Pokemon player's guides for those games. I think uh, for the original Game Boy, it was red and blue and yellow, those Pokemon games. So unfortunately, you won't see the guides for those. But these are all the other first-party Nintendo player's guides for the Game Boy. Starting right off the bat with the Game Boy Nintendo player's guide. And uh, if we just crack it open real quick we see a copyright of 1991. So the Game Boy had only been around uh, for about two and a half years at this point. Uh, so uh, most of its library isn't even covered in this guide, but uh, it still has some of the essential titles that help uh, give Game Boy the immense popularity that uh, it pretty much enjoyed right out of the gate and throughout the majority of its lifespan. This is also uh, one of the first guard, uh, guides where we start to see this aesthetic with uh, the rectangle in the middle with the name of the player's guide and the Nintendo player's guide, the seal in the lower right hand corner, and then the official guide for to over 130 Game Boy games published by the pros at Nintendo. Published by the pros at Nintendo is something we're going to see um, along the bottom of just about every player's guide for the Super NES uh, in the next installment uh, of this uh, playlist for first-party Nintendo player's guides. Uh, this is kind of the design aesthetic that you're going to see with the solid spine and then the, the title in a solid color as well and then Nintendo player's guide here along the bottom. So this one says, now go to the source for Game Boy games. The pros at Nintendo have packed everything you ever wanted to know about Game Boy games into one bestseller, the Game Boy edition of the Nintendo Player's Guide series. Use the complete directory as a buyer's guide to pick your next challenge from the growing Game Boy library, now topping 130 hits. Check out the power meter ratings and stats for your favorite games in the comprehensive index. Dig into the gigantic in-depth reviews on over 25 top titles written by the game pros at Nintendo. Find out how to ace the Joker. Map out victory in Gargoyle's Quest. Read it. Line up new strategies for Tetris and win. Get the muscle to tackle these Game Boy hits. New strategies, tips, moves, and maps are yours inside for these and other Red Hot Nintendo Game Boy winners. And then here's a list of all the games that you're going to see covered here. And much like the uh, Nintendo or NES game Atlas uh, that I took a look at last time, which was the NES version of this player's guide, they go in-depth on several games here. So you get to see full maps and pretty much an almost complete walkthrough of the game. And then it closes out here, there's strength in numbers. More Nintendo player's guides are coming. Keep your eye out for the most complete video game coverage between two covers. You'll have a winning collection. So this is the opener for the Game Boy, the Game Boy Nintendo Player's Guide. 
After that, around that same time, I believe, or actually, no, this is more around 1993, two years later, uh, a couple of years into the Super NES lifespan, but you can see that this player's guide is following in that aesthetic. We've got the rectangle in the middle with the title, and then your link to surviving the nightmares of Koholint from the pros at Nintendo. So we see that continued on. And again, here's the back, has a very similar aesthetic and similar design cues there with the titles and big, blocky, colorful letters. But it opens with, The uh, Link survives a shipwreck, only to face the nightmares of Koholan Island. An all-new adventure unfolds when Link, the hero of Hylian lore, is caught in a furious squall that rips his ship apart and pitches him into the sea. He washes ashore on the mystery-shrouded Koholan, an uncharted isle unlike any he has ever explored before. After enduring the nightmarish ordeal, Link learns that a strange and mystic legend casts a great shadow over this island. Ever one to rise to a challenge, Link puts his courage and cunning to the test as he seeks answers that will solve the mystery of the legendary windfish that slumbers atop the island's most lofty peak. So that's the intro to Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And uh, as I was reading that intro to you um, here, I came across a word that um, several years ago, I don't even remember what video was for, but I think I said something in that video along the lines of Hylian or Hylian. And uh, somebody in the comments, um, I don't know, they said something to the effect of, that's not how you pronounce that. And it made me take a step back and think, you know, just the difference now between uh, what we have at our disposal with YouTube and online references where we can actually hear the correct pronunciations of these strange and new words versus, you know, back when I was a kid in 1991 or 1993, I was a, you know, 11 or 13 year old kid reading this guide. So I just had to I take my best guess is how do you, how do you uh, pronounce Hylian. Is it Hylian or Hylian? So I just thought was, that was interesting, kind of a, a difference in the generations here. We kind of uh, had to make up our own pronunciations of some of these words. So that's one of the examples here uh, with Hylian or Hylian or however you choose to say it. Another one is uh, I've heard uh, Ocarina of Time versus Ocarina of Time. In my part of Northern Illinois, we were calling it Ocarina of Time. But uh, as I've been hearing online, it seems the internet has decided that it's Ocarina of Time, not Ocarina of Time. So continuing on here, we'll go to the Super Game Boy playlist, uh, Super uh, Game Boy Player's Guide. This one's a little bit different. It still does have the complete guide to the colorful side of Game Boy with Super Game Boy. And as you may or may not know, uh, the Super Game Boy was a Super NES cartridge. Uh, into which you could put a Game Boy game and then play the Game Boy game on your TV. Which, uh, in retrospect, was really kind of interesting how Nintendo kept flip-flopping, going back and forth, because when the Game Boy came out, they were like, now you can take all of your NES-like games on the move. Because granted, they weren't the exact NES games you could play on your TV at home, but they were still trying to advertise, now you can take these great in-depth adventures on the road with you. And then here they're saying, oh, wait a minute, no, no, now you can take these portable adventures and play them on your TV. So they were definitely cross-marketing it, but if you step back and think about it, it's like, okay, Nintendo, well, uh, what's the best way to play these games? First, you were all, ex all excited we could take them with us. Now you're saying, oh, no, 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 take them back to your TV. But uh, that's what this peripheral was, the Super Game Boy. And this is the uh, guide that was packed with it. If we take a look at the back, there's uh, really nothing going on. There's still a barcode here. Uh, that you could scan for a retail purchase, but I believe that the Super Game Boy uh, was available for purchase in two configurations. You could buy it uh, standalone uh, in a Super NES sized box, or you could buy it in a bigger box, kind of like Earthbound style, where this guide was packaged along with it. So there's not a whole lot of information to read about it here on the cover, so we won't be doing that in this video, unless of course you vote to see more of this guide in the second video. But uh, this was for the Super Game Boy, which was released around 1994. And then after that, 
we got the guide for the Game Boy Camera, which was a peripheral that came out around the time of the Game Boy Pocket, although it was backwards compatible with the standard Game Boy as well. But this one says, the official guide from the pros at Nintendo. So we're already starting to vary from that uh, original aesthetic that we had with this guide and the Game Boy guide itself. But it says, is this is the Funtography Guide. 100 plus picks, tricks, tips, and projects. Because the Game Boy Camera Peripheral, if you're not familiar with it, is a black and white sort of webcam that has a cartridge on it that you stick into your Game Boy and you can take black and white pictures with it. There was also a printer peripheral where you could uh, print out kind of ticker tape style uh, rolls of your photos that you take. But the intro to this one says, picture perfect. What happens when you cross photography with the Game Boy? You get picture taking with a focus on fun. But photography will be fun only if you've figured out how to use the Game Boy camera. To help you become a hotshot shutterbug, the pros at Nintendo Power bring you the Game Boy Camera Funtography Guide, the essential handbook that will help you master the complexities of the camera. A picture is worth a thousand words, so you better make sure they have something good to say. So they show you the Game Boy camera plugged into a Game Boy Pocket and then the Game Boy printer peripheral, which I always thought was interesting that uh, the Game Boy Pocket was pretty much the most common way to buy a Game Boy at that time because it was much improved over the original. But the, um, the Game Boy printer itself, the aesthetic of it was modeled more after the original design of the Game Boy, and uh, they never really did a, a redesign of it. Uh, so the Game Boy camera matches up with the Game Boy Pocket, but the Game Boy printer matches up more with the, uh, the original Game Boy. But this guide will show you uh, some tips and trip, uh, tricks about music, activities, magic and animation too so in that vein it's kind of like the uh, mario paint guide that we may take a look at in depth in the super nes uh entry in the playlist of first party nintendo players guides and then the last guide we have here this one's kind of interesting it's for two games for the Game Boy Color were released The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons and The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. This is the complete strategy guide for both games. So the aesthetic is a little bit different because uh, it's a little bit later on now, but it's still touting Nintendo Power up here. It says the only guide from Nintendo. And this one is starting to actually match the aesthetic more of the um, N64 and the GameCube uh, guides that we're going to see in the future. But the intro to this one says, Double Trouble. When Hyrule's hero finds himself in a fix while searching for the Oracle of Seasons and the Oracle of Ages, you can turn to the official source from Nintendo for adventuring advice. So we've got Ages on the left and Seasons on the right. And it's actually showing here the Game Boy Color thumbnails of the game. So these are the guides in the Game Boy line of Nintendo Published Player's Guide. And the one I'm going to select for this video to take a more in-depth look at is kind of the introduction to the Game Boy, which will be the Game Boy Player's Guide. So again, if you want to vote on one of these guides to take an in-depth look at in the next video, the options are Super Game Boy, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Game Boy Camera Funtography Guide, and Legend of Zelda Seasons, uh, Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. Take a look in the video description for the link to the survey and you can fill, out, fill that out and let me know what your choice is there. But for now, the Game Boy Guide, the official Nintendo Game Boy Player's Guide. We take open, uh, if we open a front cover here, you see you got kind of a cool uh, collage of Game Boy uh, cover art here for several of the games that are going to be featured in this guide. And I believe that it's similar. Oh, no, it's not. It's totally different on the inside back cover. This is kind of an advertisement for uh, subscribing to Nintendo Power. But if we go back to the front and look at the table of contents, you see that this guide is really more about all the in-depth reviews in several different categories. We've got action, puzzle, adventure, 
RPG. A paltry three titles here for RPG. This is really before uh, the Super Nintendo got the North American audiences really kind of primed and ready and excited for the JRPG and other variants of the genre. So there really weren't a whole lot of RPGs yet on the Game Boy. We were starting to see them a lot though on the Super NES at this point though. A few sports games too and then a directory and an index that we'll take a look at. So since the formula, I've already looked at this guide, the formula is pretty much the same for each one. We'll just take a look at uh, what it had to offer for one game uh, in the action series. And I think I'm going to choose Super Mario Land starting right away uh, on page four. But let's see what else the guide has for us on pages two and three before we get to Super Mario Land on page four. <clears throat> So it says, Game Boy grows up. There is no keeping up with the ever-expanding Game Boy library. Though the Game Boy Player's Guide is a good place to start, it's chock full of winning strategies, maps, and special tips for 28 of the best games for the leading compact video game system. When you're playing ultra-challenging games like Tetris, Castlevania, Operation C, Gargoyles Quest, and the Final Fantasy Legend, it pays to know what your next move should be. And that's what this guide, brought to you by the pros who create Nintendo Power, is all about. So you want to know how to refill your energy instantly in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Follow the Foot Clan? Save the world from the BYDO Empire in R-Type? Soar by your friends in a game link match of Dr. Mario? Read on. You should also check out th uh, the thoroughly researched Game Boy Directory and Index. There you'll find descriptions, screenshots, game link info, and power meter scores for all the Game Boy games to date. Use this valuable guide to over 130 Game Boy titles when choosing your next compact challenge. Games in the directory are broken up into six categories. Action, Adventure, Puzzle, Quiz, and, quiz and Productivity, RPG, and Sports. The action category is the largest. It covers games that require quick reflexes and steady hands. Games in the adventure category are usually long, action-oriented quests that involve decision-making. The puzzle category is made up of, the br of brain teasers that take a lot of thought and strategy to master. In puzzle games, you've got to know all the pieces and figure out how they fit together in order to reach your end goal. The quiz and productivity category covers the game show adaptations and the new series of Info Genius Game Packs. Well, that's a new one on me. I was never aware of Info Genius Game Packs. But games in the RPG, or role-playing category, are adventures that focus more on character building and puzzle solving than action. And the sports category speaks for itself. Most of the games in this group are game linkers that are great for solo play or for a friendly challenge with your pals. Even more Game Boy games are being developed as this guide goes to press. Keep watching. And it says, look for more Nintendo Player's Guides for the most complete game coverage from the pros. Game Boy Nintendo Player's Guide. Got quite a late 80s, early 90s aesthetic going on there too. I quite love that. And what I love even more is this picture here. Oh my goodness, Nintendo had some good advertising. Look at those gloves. Those gloves that, I guess, this robot. There was a robot uh, in the original commercial for the Game Boy uh, that a human player was kind of uh, competing with over a linked version of Tetris. But uh, if you look at these gloves, it looks like um, it's almost like a cyborg with, um, I don't know, little nubs here that hook up directly to the A and B buttons and then kind of clamp over the D-pad, I guess, so uh, it can play with uh, really quick reflexes. But uh, that's kind of the opening image here for the in-depth reviews. So that'll take us to page four where Super Mario Land starts. So it is full color. Gives you a little bit of an overview of the game. A new princess to rescue in the untamed land of Sarasa Land await you in Mario's first Game Boy Adventure. The setting is strange, but the theme is familiar and fun. <laughs> so it sounds like uh, Nintendo was self-aware here, and they knew that this game uh, really wasn't quite as similar as what we were used to. But um, still, we got all the, uh, the finalized art here, which you also saw in the instruction manual, but here it's in full color. So there's quite a bit of difference there. This is uh, an aspect here that the Player's Guide has an advantage over the actual manual. Got all this character art here in full color along with some screenshots. So we see all the characters and enemies. 
other items that you could get out of the bricks. Kind of a combination of art and screenshots here. So if we continue on, we've got four pages of coverage so far. It looks like we're able to cover um, all three sections of a world in a page and a half. So they give you, it looks like these are, oh my goodness, it's hard to tell if they're illustrations or if those are actually screenshots. I mean, they are pretty contrasted with the more yellow screenshots there in the, uh, the little inlays. So I'm tempted to say that these look more like illustrations as far as the full stage maps go, which is pretty typical with these, uh, these older player's guides. So we continue on with World 2 and World 3 on these pages. They tell you exactly what's in each blocks, uh, each block and give you uh, strategies about how to get over certain jumps and deal with certain enemies here. So again, this is just a treasure trove for us early 90s kids trying to get through these games way before the YouTube tutorial walkthrough. So it looked like a game with uh, quite a bit of depth, which was the case for Super Mario Land. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pages of coverage, which is pretty good. And as you can see from the table of contents here, that's going to be the theme for most of the guide through all of those categories. Action, puzzle, adventure, RPG, and sports. So then we're going to skip ahead to the directory, page 137. Let's see what the directory has for us. 137. Got another awesome late 80s, early 90s type of aesthetic here. So this is the directory for all the different genres of games. Looks like this might be for the games, uh, some of the new ones that they didn't have quite enough time to have some in-depth coverage before this uh, guide went to print. So uh, in that respect, it's similar to the NES Atlas uh, that we took a uh, look at in the previous uh, segment for the NES player's guides. So a little bit more of a general overview and perhaps a buyer's guide. So that goes on for several pages of some upcoming games or some of the more recent games. And that goes on until we get to the next section, which is the index. Game Pack Index gives a key there, and what's really cool about this is that um, it gives the Nintendo Power ratings. Uh, by this time, Nintendo Power was kind of flying high, and they do say it all over the place, you know, published by the pros at Nintendo. This is the Nintendo Power Player's Guide. But what's neat about this, I guess, they give you the rating that Nintendo Power gave each game. It looks like it's probably on a five-point scale there, as uh, most of these games are receiving a three, or uh, I see some as high as a four. So let's see if we, uh, what they say here. Oh no, it looks like it was a four-point scale as I look at it here. So as far as the power meter rating goes, they rated the games with a G, graphics and sound, P, play control, C, challenge, and T, theme and fun. So uh, if those reviews meant anything to you in deciding what games to purchase, uh, that was kind of a bigger deal back then because, you know, we didn't have those YouTube reviews or even website reviews of games. Uh, the Nintendo Power uh, ratings here were something that uh, you really could have used as a basis to make your decision for which games you wanted to spend your hard-earned money on. So uh, the index here, it looks like a place to kind of just collect all of the Nintendo Power ratings for each game and give you some other information about which company published it, how many players it was, what kind of save system it had, if it was a password or a battery backup, and then your Nintendo Power rating, the category of the game, action, sports, etc., and then the page in this guide in which it was reviewed. So that, my friends, is the Game Boy Player's Guide. So uh, stay tuned for part two that's going to be coming uh, fairly soon. Remember, though, you're going to have a say in what guide we take a look at in depth. So definitely uh, take a look at the link, uh, the video description link for this video. Click on it and then vote for which of the guides that you would like to see. Again, those guides are Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Seasons and Ages, Game Boy Camera, Photography Guide, 
Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, and the Super Game Boy Guide. So until then, I want to thank you for watching, and please take care. Bye-bye.